get your best application for admission to the top business school. My name is Tia Paswani and I'm Marketing Manager based in GMAX London office. Today's session has been built to help those of you who have a few final doubts about what you should and should not include in your business school application. So it's for that reason that I'm really pleased to be joined today by Sonia Gaston, Deputy Head for International Admissions at EDEC Business School. Sonia has a wealth of experience in the business school world. She's been working for EDEC Business School for the past five years, first as a manager for international admissions, and then moving into her current position as deputy head. Before joining EDEC, she worked as a marketing manager for INSEAD, another top business school based in France. We've got a real expert on international admissions with us today, so please take this opportunity to join in, ask questions about the do's and the don'ts of assembling an application that will impress admission staff at the schools you're interested in. If you do have any questions, the Q&A tab is located on the left-hand navigation, so feel free to post your questions and I'll be sure to allocate some time to answer them after the presentation. Now, without any further delay, I'll hand over to Sonia to begin today's presentation from France. Okay, thank you very much, Tina. I have to say that was a very good um, introduction. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, hello everyone. Uh, as Tina just mentioned uh, earlier, um, my name is Sonia Gasto. Uh, I've been part of the admissions team for five years and actually been working in the education sector for about seven years now. Um, so great experience and as you can imagine I have uh, received in my hand thousands of applications so far and uh, very often what I've noticed from international students um, is Sometimes they just wonder how they should build a good application file. Um, how can they stand out, you know, in the recruiter's eye, but also in the selection committee's eye. And also some students um, tend to not apply because they feel that it might be too big of a process um, or maybe outside of their reach, which you know is not the case. So this session will be uh, helping you to see what are the key points that are expected from top business schools, how to build a good application file um, and uh, covering uh, main points. So if we move on to slide two, uh, the objective of the seminar, uh, we'll be focusing on three main aspects. So first of which um, is uh, recognize the importance of writing a good curriculum. Um, and you will see that uh, it is very different to what you can find um, when you apply for a job, for instance a specific format is needed. Um, we'll cover very briefly on identifying your own skills and personal qualities, which is sometimes something that can be left aside, but it's uh, always good for you to know um, so that when you apply, you can actually bring those little points uh, up front. Um, understand the reasons behind creating a statement of purpose and the importance of a and uh, what to expect from an interview uh, from a top business school. So without any delay, let's focus on the curriculum. So I don't know if all of you actually know uh, its translation in Latin, but it actually means the course of life. Uh, and by course of life, uh, we don't mean you writing an essay, um, but actually there are key points that are very important, which I will cover a little bit later. It is considered as a marketing tool. You never have a second chance of giving a first impression. So let's do this together and look at uh, main elements uh, in this aspect. Um, you, you can be detailed, but uh, not too detailed, um, and it's usually the first point uh, before we go on to uh, building your application. So, slide number four, your curriculum. Um, there are two points that I'll be covering, first of which is the format. Um, the header, your objectives, the uh, work experience, extracurricular activity and your research experiences are really key elements uh, as part of your um, CV. So um, again, you know, going back into what is really uh, perceived as uh, key elements to help the, the admissions team go through your, your CV, um, really try to make it clear 
there are little tips also that can help us uh, really focus on the main points, which is clearly identify and uh, Give us details on your GPA, your GMAT. If you've not taken your GMAT, tell us when you uh, have um, booked an exam and uh, your English uh, results. So I appreciate that some of you are actually based in, in an English-speaking country, but um, for international schools, most of the program will be delivered in English. It's the business language now and uh, helping us see your English proficiency uh, is helpful as well. Try to innovate. Um, so there are some tools uh, that can help you uh, have an online uh, presence as well. So uh, here you have a link of a website which is called Do You Buzz. It's a French actually um, website uh, that has been going on for about uh, I would say seven to eight years. Um, and if you have time after this session, I do encourage you to have a look at it. Um, it's a good way for you to build an online TV, and also with a very easy tool, you can actually. Uh, uh, convert this online CV into a, a Word document. Um, if we move on to slide number five, um, here you have details on, uh, okay, of some innovative uh, examples. So what I like to do sometimes is to really show how far you can go and then help you narrow down to what we actually need. Um, and again, Remember who is your target audience, okay? Uh, in this case, you're actually going to show your curriculum to the admissions committee. You're going to, sh the CV is going to go in through the selection committee's hand, your, the faculty's hand, but also in some cases, some top business schools uh, will actually ask alumni to help uh, in the recruitment process as well. So. Again, with you know the 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 uh, the goal to show you how far you can go. Always remember who is your target audience. So this first example is actually a CV uh, that is done in the way of a timeline. A lot of color coding, um, and this CV would be appropriate for a candidate who wants to go into uh, uh, desktop publishing, for instance, to show his skills. Okay. If we move on to the next example. Okay, uh, I guess it, I guess it's up. But the 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 next example is actually uh, an, an example of a CV that was done by a South Korean girl, um, again who who wanted to um, stand out, uh, which was actually embroidered. Okay. Next example, so you have, you know, on the top right-hand corner, Tammy Bed. So um, this is a CV. Um, actually done by uh, an actor, okay? And the last example, it's a video. Okay, so again, all these examples are to show you how far you can go, okay? Now, moving on to uh, next slide. You have uh, CV examples, uh, the goods and the bads. Okay, so I quite like uh, going through that slide actually. So if you focus on the left side, you will see uh, the bad. Um, so the first reaction you can see, get, you know, when you see that CV, it's okay, it's quite plain, uh, it's very light. Um, but if we focus a little bit more in detail, you will see that the email address, okay? When you apply to a top business school, every single detail is looked into. Okay, so uh, I have seen over the years um, some students uh, <laughs> really not realizing uh, the image that they would uh, give, you know, um, um, through their CV. So, for instance, your email address. I have seen over the years um, crazy. Uh, um, I don't know, crazy Katie at uh, gmail.com, uh, love the life at qq.com, you know, don't do that. Uh, go for a very simple email address. Um, also in terms of your um, education background, uh, try to focus, you know, in chronological, um, uh, well, 
in chronological order, so always highlight what you're currently doing. Um, if we move on to um, also uh, the content, make sure that you read twice your CV as well, so no spelling mistakes. Um, and uh, also with your extracurricular activities, um, I see some students sometimes sending me three or four page long CVs. No need to do that. Again, remember what's your objective and who you're targeting uh, with this, uh, this information. So although you might have some great uh, information to share, usually you know, you would be aiming for a master's degree uh, program, uh, which is aimed at students with, let's say, uh, six months to three years of experience in average. Uh, I don't think you have a uh, four page long worth of activities and professional experiences to share on that page. So make it concise, sharp, relevant. On the good section, uh, what you can see, first of all, is the name very clear. On the right hand, top right hand corner, you have the key uh, profile information such as the mobile phone, email address, uh, well, the, the usual thing. One thing I would like to add here, which goes back to what I've just mentioned before, this is the place where you can actually add, you know, in a little section, your GPA, GMAT, IELTS. Um, which are key things that help the admissions team go through your file quite quickly. Um, open your CV with uh, your objectives. It's always good, you know, in three, four sentences for you to share what are your academic goals and which program you're interested in. Again, remember that um, when you are building your application file for your dream school, you want it to be personal. Okay, so this is the really the, the, the advice I would give you. Make it specific. Then this is where also I find this quite interesting for you to share your skills and experience. And this goes back to what I've mentioned in the opening of this presentation. When you apply to a top business school, try to step back. Try to see um, what is the need you're actually trying to fulfill. Why are you at a stage where you need some extra academic knowledge? Um, and in relation to this need, try to see what are your, your strengths and weaknesses. It's always good to add this as well onto your CV. Then, depending if you have some professional experience or not, uh, you can include a professional experience section and then move on to the education. And don't forget to include a little note to mention that your referees, you know, are available upon request. So, yeah. If, yeah. Can I ask a quick question? Um, sure. What, what keywords would you recommend that candidates use when putting together a CV? So, in their bullet points, what kind of words are you looking for? Um, and just for an example, should they be talking about leading things or directing things? What, what do you, where does your eye go and what do you look at? Okay, so th that's a very good question, Tina, because um, again, over the years, uh, you, you can see a lot of mistakes being done. So, uh, and that goes, for instance, from the opening on the uh, objective section. Uh, we know as an admissions team that you, the candidate, are writing your CV. So don't use the third person. You can clearly say, I, you know, Peter from, I don't know, Texas, whatever. No need to say uh, uh, Peter is known for being blah, blah. Okay? We don't expect this. Um, in terms of, uh, um, so, so that's my advice for really the objective part. Okay, um, and even if you just have three or four lines here, uh, we can immediately sense the personality you have. Are you driven? Are you using uh, direct um, 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 verbs, you know, things like this. Try to illustrate who you are from the beginning, you know. I will not push you to, 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 um, because at the end of the day, the CV is the first point for us to know you, and if you if you lie from that first piece of information, we'll find out a little bit later down the stage. So there's no need to do that. Um, then, in terms of key, 
I, I would rather focus on key sections rather than keywords because again uh, the language and style that you need to adopt uh, to adapt to, to use sorry depends on the program and the career path you wish to take for instance uh, if you're interested in a finance um, um, a finance program uh, clearly show how knowledgeable you are uh, in this in this area so even if you have no experience uh, have you taken any specific courses uh, in relation to a finance program if yes which one are they? Uh, you can even go into the detail on, on giving us details on your uh, uh, GPA for that major, for instance, if you majored in, in finance. Um, and don't forget the extracurricular section. And I'm specifically talking to students who don't have a lot of experience, experiences, professional experiences, I mean. Um, D during your 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 bachelor's degree, you can always take part into some student association in relation to finance. You may well be taking your CFA uh, one uh, exam. If so, tell us when, um, and 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 all that. So I hope Tina that answers uh, your question. So I'll move on to. Oh yeah, I just want to hold you up for one more second. So. Uh, this is a good a good chance to point out the uh, the question and answer app within the within the hangout. So if users go to the top of their screen, um, I think it's up here, um, and click there's like a little three by three grid. If you click there, there's an app uh, that you can start up on your on your um, on your screen where you can ask questions to uh, to Sonia and to Tina and myself um, that we will that we will address. And there's actually a couple in there already about. Um, if we're able to provide these slides after, um, or if, if there's somewhere where they can view uh, these example CVs in, uh, in a more detailed format, just because of broadcasting it over this Hangout, uh, they could be a little bit hard to read. So is there, is, are these CVs, uh, example CVs posted somewhere, Sonia? Well, actually, no. But what I can say is, uh, if you want to give us your email address, I mean, you're not bound to anything at all. So I'm more than happy to uh, share, you know, a few few examples. No problem. Okay. I hope I hope that helps. That's that helps you. <laughs> so yeah, so I mean, you know, that we can really talk about the the CV in detail. But what I'm trying to stress on is the fact that usually when um, you are interested uh, in a school and a program, you will usually get in touch with the admissions team by sending over a copy of your CV, briefly introducing yourself in an email, and explaining what are your academic wants. Okay, So it, it is true that the CV is the first point of contact and the, the first impression you're getting out to the admissions team. And remember, uh, I would say in 90% of cases, they are part of the selection committee as well. So, um, although some students might find that, okay, it's just a, a, a procedure element, actually no, it's very important. And every single email that you have and you exchange with the admissions team um, gives an impression of who you are. So that's also another tip I'm giving out to you. Uh, try to concise all your questions in one email. So I find sometimes students uh, considering, you know, the general uh, admissions email address as a, um, a, a very casual way to get in contact with the school. Well, actually, not really, uh, especially if you're considering top schools. Um, so if you if you don't mind, I'll just move on to the other aspects. But sure, if there are any additional questions, particularly on CVs, I'm more than happy to take them later, if that's okay. So moving on to slide number seven, just as a little recap on what are the do's and don'ts. Okay, so I guess that will um, help out a lot of uh, viewers as well. So although it might sound very obvious, okay, but in the don'ts, do not lie. Okay, you when especially when you're targeting top business schools, uh, we, we will find out. Okay, so uh, I'm referring to uh, the, the the previous uh, degree that you've had. Uh, I'm referring to your professional experiences as well. 
we, we do check out. It's normal, and uh, it's the type of uh, of process you would like to see being done to the other peers who will be in your class as well. So uh, no need to go into um, 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 irrelevant, you know, information uh, like your marital status. We don't really need to know that has no impact in your academic uh, potential. Um, and yeah, don't don't be careful also in terms of layout. So in the do's, uh, be consistent in your layout. Um, list your skills and achievements and back up with evidence. Keep it short. Again, maximum two pages. Remember, you're targeting a business school, not a job. You don't have a research position and all that. Use uh, positive action verbs. So that goes back, Tina, to what you've, you've been asking before. Um, this, this shows positive um, aspects over your application. Be honest, check your spelling mistakes, and get someone to check it for you. It's always good to have two pairs of eyes. Okay, so if we move on to um, slide eight, uh, moving on to the cover letter. Okay, so the cover letter, uh, you, again, going back onto uh, the business school's world, um, Check out with the admissions team whether an interview is uh, required or not as part of the selection committee. I would say that uh, in 70 to 80 percent of cases, you will have an interview. In some cases, you won't. And therefore, the cover letter is really your only chance to express your want, your academic uh, uh, experience, and your academic future academic desires as well. So, some points you know you need to consider uh, in your SOP, which are highlighted in the presentation. But generally speaking, what I like you, what I like, what I advise you is to think of the five W's, okay? So uh, who, who you are, where do you want to be, um, how, how do you want to be, um, you know, this, 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 this future person, uh, when? You know, so really try to, to think about this. And there's also another set of questions which I quite like to share with students is um, introduce yourself. Why should the selection committee select you and not, um, I don't know, uh, Vishaka from India? What can you bring to the class? Um, give us detail on what are your career objectives and why you feel that this program can help you reach these, um, these ob objectives as well. Um, this really helps you structure your piece. Um, and if we move on to the next slide, um, you have little tips here on uh, writing stages to help you uh, go back and cover the questions which I've just uh, mentioned before. So at the start, so before writing it, ask yourself the questions that need to be answered, which I've just been uh, just covered. Try to brainstorm on every point. It's a very personal thing, so I would advise you to do it on your own. Make an outline. When you write, start from, from logically, so write the introduction, the body in paragraphs, and summarize your profile and conclude in a positive note. After writing, revise it, finalize it, and that's when you can have someone check it. Just to conclude on the cover letter, the do's and the don't, um, this is a tip also to give to students. Um, I hope you know it's the same case with uh, all business schools, but from what I've experienced uh, amongst the, the, the top ones or and, and all business schools, we, we don't like to talk about uh, other other schools. Um, each of us, you know, have uh, different assets and strengths to offer. Um, and this is the attitude that I would advise you to adopt uh, immediately from your SOP. So no need to criticize other schools or employers. It's really not the place for you to do that. Uh, no need to apologize for bad, bad test scores. However, on this point, I would like to add something. Um, I have received uh, students' uh, applications uh, for instance, uh, our financial markets program is very well known, and the average GMAT uh, is is very high. Uh, it, it's it's around the 700 uh, field, um, and some students understand the 
importance of this aspect because it reassures the selection committee on their quantitative skills. Okay, um, so if you, let's say you've had a score which is much lower than this, first of all, check out what is the minimum score asked by the school. What's the average score for for each program by by the school that you're interested in? And again, that goes to that point. No need to apologize for a bad bad result. If you've had one, show us how motivated you are to retake that exam and to improve yourself. Okay. Uh, remember that sometimes uh, saying less tells more. Okay. <laughs> so I would advise students not to ex exceed the 1,500 words. Um, try to use a double spacing as well. Um, it's a little tip, but it helps the reader to really uh, go through your, your cover letter. Uh, and in the do's, again, be honest, um, specific, use examples, be positive. Uh, and again, you know, it's it might sound obvious to, especially with, with what I've said before, but it's something personal you need to write yourself. One thing also that students maybe don't realize is that uh, we use some tools that help us see if you're copying your cover letter from an existing uh, platform, okay? Um, so no plagia. If we move on to the interviews, um, so this is slide number 11. Uh, what is important to see uh, and for you to check out with the admissions team is what are the different types of interviews uh, that are carried um, by the school. Um, first of all, will there be an interview? If yes, in what form? Okay, so is it a Skype interview, online recording, is it face-to-face, -face, the recruitment fair, uh, is it a psychometric test, uh, is it um, how many interview stages will there be, will I have to be uh, checked uh, by an alumnus as well, you know, these are all the ch questions that you need to ask and it helps you also work on your timeline to see uh, how much far in advance you need to work and build your application file. Uh, and again, going back onto your target audience, who will be taking the interview? Moving on to next slide, how to start, know yourself, <laughs> okay? So uh, usually the interview will come at the last stage. Um, and this is when, again, after having done all this exercise of building your CV, working on your strengths, your weaknesses, um, again, just work on uh, what are the key points and achievements you've done through your education, um, your experience, your accomplishments, skills and competencies. Um, have you done any charity work, community service, work ethics? Try to make your application shine. Do's and don'ts for the interviews. So focusing on the don'ts. Uh, do not blather about irrelevant topics, okay? Um, try to, to answer the question, well try, answer the questions that are being uh, given to you. Do not be informal, um, so I would advise you to uh, pay attention to how you are dressed, um, how you appear as well. Um, try to uh, portray um, an image that is confident as well, um, and do not get stuck on the top, okay? So the, the do's, uh, uh, before going for an interview, really try to think of the key points you want to send across, okay? And always back them up with some examples, okay? Um, be comfortable, um, try to use positive um, uh, verbs um, and be specific like I've just mentioned before and also your attitude, smile, relax, uh, you're happy to be part of this interview pro process, it's a privilege as well um, and make sure that the admissions team wants to um, include you as part of the next uh, cohort. Moving on to slide 14, basic questions. Um, so here in this slide you have some examples of what you can 
doing an interview process. So tell me something about yourself. So usually the interviewer will start by, you know, some very uh, general question to make you as well feel comfortable. Again, the objective here is to make you shine. At least that's how I carry uh, interviews. Um, and then you will see that as you go down through the interview, the questions will become a little bit more, a little bit more specific. And this is where your homework uh, becomes very important. So, going on to what are your strengths and weaknesses, uh, make sure that you know them beforehand and back them up with some examples. A little tip I will give you regarding weaknesses: we all have weaknesses. Okay, so um, there's no. Um, problem in you sharing us uh, some weaknesses that you identify and you know what it's really good to share them because through your application into this program you can show why the program can help you overcome these weaknesses as well so this is how I would advise you to approach that um, how you handled a conflict at work again if you have no work experiences the question may be tailored to a group exercises you've done in the past how are you in a team uh, would you see yourself more as a leader as a follower these are the type of questions you can expect as well and what accomplishments in your life uh, are you the most proud of and that's it for me so I hope this uh, presentation was um, insightful. Um, I tried to keep it short uh, just to give you tips on uh, what are the main points for you to focus on uh, when you build an application file for a top business school. Um, and if you wish to have a profile evaluation, I'm more than happy to uh, uh, help you with that as well. And if there are any questions, I'm very happy to, to answer them as well. All right, great. Thank you, Sonia. That, that was excellent and definitely provided some, some good information for, uh, for those joined in here. Um, as far as the follow-up uh, information that people are requesting in the, in the questions, if you can send your request, uh, including your email address, to gmatevents at mba.com, so that's G-M-A-T, E V E N T S at M B A dot com. Um, we'll follow up with you and get you uh, some additional materials and possibly some of these example CVs uh, to help you with your with your application. So apart from that, there are a couple questions in here that uh, I think would be valuable to get your input on, Sonia. Okay. Uh, sorry, say that again. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so if uh, there's one question here. Um, if the application requirements don't include a cover letter, why, you know, should we submit one? Why should we submit one? Um, Sorry, I didn't letter, catch that. If your application requirements don't include a cover letter, why should a, a student or, or an applicant submit a cover letter? Um, you know, if, if there's already two or five, two to five essays to prepare, what what does a cover letter add to that application if it's not required? Okay, so again, that goes back to what I've mentioned, you know, at first is, um, first of all, when you are thinking of uh, furthering your education, you need to see what is the specific want that you want to um, overcome, okay? So that will pretty much help you select the schools that you're interested in. My advice to you is really to select the schools up front. Then you will approach the, the different admissions team and you will ask them what are the requirements as part of the, the selection process. If there is no cover letter needed, then my advice for you would not be to, to, to work on one. It's always a really good exercise for you to, to understand what are your motivations and to go through that journey. Mm -hmm. um, but I wouldn't advise you, of course, to, to do one if it's not uh, specifically required. I agree. I think um, although you might not submit one, it's probably a really good exercise to put down mm. exactly what you said, you know, who you are in a positive note, what you want yeah. to get. So it's probably not something you should dismiss, even if they're not looking for it specifically. It's a good exercise on one page to get down exactly who you are, what your aims are, what your motivations are, where you want to be and how you want the program to help you. And it will help you anyway for the interview process as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great, thank you. That was 
Excellent. Uh, there's another another question here. Um, is it really better to take a year to work before applying for the MBA? Okay, so the 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 MBA um, application process is is different in the sense that uh, you will notice that the let's say the top 50 MBA programs in the world will be open to students who have minimum three to five years of work experiences so in that sense you know the the, the answer is quite easy to answer then I do know that in some uh, countries um, the MBA program will come just after the bachelor's degree so uh, my personal view is yes, the, you, you, you need to have some work experience because the MBA uh, content really helps students move up into general management positions and the, 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 or maybe change their geographical locations. So it's really aimed at students uh, who, who want to step up. And in order for you to um, make sense from the classes that will be provided to you, you need to be able to illustrate it and in, into a working environment. And this just only comes to life when you have that experience. Great, thank you. So the, uh, the, there's another question here. Um, as an admissions manager, for evaluating a candidate for scholarships, how much emphasis do you place on test scores and how much on professional and personal achievement? So the, the balance of those two things and I guess how do, you, how do you balance those out when you're looking at a candidate? This is a very good question and I'm really happy it comes in. So first of all, let, let me um, uh, open a little bit up this, this topic. Um, a lot of students, when they envisage an application to a top business school, and that's what I've experienced uh, through through my, my years of experience in top business schools, is that students feel that if they are in the need of financial help, it will jeopardize their application. The answer is no. <laughs> Top business schools really have two separate committees. So one is the academic selection committee, which will purely evaluate your academic potential. And then you have a, a scholarship committee, which is aimed at providing some solutions to students who are in financial need. Okay. So uh, uh, again, check with the school. Uh, because I do know that depending on the school, there are pretty much different uh, levels of scholarships uh, which are available. You have it based on gender, you have it based on uh, country location, on um, interests, and, and, and so on. So this will pretty much help you to see what are the requirements and uh, how are the students evaluated as part of the scholarship scheme. There also are some private scholarship schemes, such as um, Total, for instance, L'Oreal, you know, they run their own scholarship scheme as well. Okay. But generally speaking, and what I can tell you for um, Edic Business School, is that uh, scholarships for Masters of Sciences students are purely based on academic excellence. So once we send your file to the selection committee and you are given acceptance onto a program, and you wish to apply for a scholarship, we will send you to the scholarship um, selection committee who, uh, based on your uh, acceptance, will evaluate your file. You need to send in um, a scholarship application form, which is totally different to your uh, program application form. Um, and we'll ask you also to justify and share with us your financial situation. So. Uh, going into the, 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 the key elements that are looked into for us, it's purely academic based, so your uh, academic achievements and uh, of course the GPA um, and also we will be focusing a lot more on the classes which are relevant to the program you're interested in. So. Um, you know, if you've taken philosophy classes and you're looking for a finance program, we will not pay as much attention to these courses as opposed to uh, the classes you would have been taken in finance, for instance, and your GMAT and your English proficiency and the ranking from the, from the selection committee as well. So 
So that's actually a good uh, a good lead into this next question, which is uh, around looking to do an MBA in a field that they may not have majored in uh, in their previous education. So are there certain courses that they can take in the interim, or are there certain certain things that you look for for a candidate like that that might be moving uh, between areas? Um, again, the MBA application is very different to a specific Master of Sciences uh, application um, in the sense that uh, usually students who embark onto an MBA um, are very specific in one field of the company. Let's say uh, you've reached a marketing director's or marketing manager's uh, position within a company and internally you know that you will be put through uh, well you're identified as a high potential and your company wants to to promote you so you will have no background in finance no background in strategy no background in innovation HR and all that this is what the MBA will help you it will help you go one step up and be able to see how all these different functions work how your speciality has an impact on all the rest and it will really help you move on to the, 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 the general management ladder. So the answer is um, you are not required to have that experience because the MBA is not meant for students who have an understanding of the entire different disciplines. However, what I can say out of experience is that students who have more a literal background and uh, are experienced, let's say, in, again, marketing, communication, strategy, usually they find it really hard to follow the finance classes. So this is where I would advise students to take on some um, finance uh, classes um, to be able to... Um, uh, uh, make sure that their, their first experience in an MBA class is not a disaster. Okay, and then sort of related to that, we have another question here. Uh, people who are coming from a different background, does that change your advice that you've given over this session uh, around their application? Is that, would you recommend anything different in their application or focus on any different parts of the application uh, in different ways from what you've recommended for the, the general student? Sorry, I didn't, I didn't uh, hear you very well. I'm sorry. So if someone who is coming from a, a background other than um, other than a business background, if they're coming from a, mm -hmm. a, a different career, such as a legal background, as this user uh, noted, do you recommend that they include anything different in their application or treat their application in a different way? Okay, that, that's a good question. So um, the transition is possible. Okay, uh, but what will reassure the selection committee is to see first, to, to first of all evaluate your interest in the field you want to move into, but also what experience, whether it's uh, extracurricular activities, uh, 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 research, you know, projects that you've taken on which has a link to the field that you're interested in. So I will give you an example. In our finance classes, we have around 10% of our students who have an engineering background and transition into finance, okay? So the transition is possible, but from these students, we will see, uh, first of all, what are the quantitative capabilities, which in most cases is very good. And this is where the GMAT helps us. Uh, we will also see if they've taken any extracurricular activities. Uh, some student may well take the, the CFA, you know, uh, level one um, certificates as well before uh, applying for a program and, and all that. So these are elements that help us. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, next question here is, if, uh, if students can overcome a low GPA with a good GMAT score? <laughs> Again, it, it, it depends on the program that you are interested in. It, it's, it's, it's not very easy to answer this question without having a full, uh, you know, understanding of, of your profile. But, okay, let me try and, and think of an example. 
pretty much, well, generally speaking, uh, the GPA and uh, it's, it's, it's a very important part. Uh, I mean, I have to be very transparent. It has a huge impact on your application process. However, um, good schools will actually look into detail into your transcripts. Okay, so if, for instance, we see that your overall GPA is actually downgraded because you've not performed well in, I don't know, gymnastics or any optional courses that you've taken which have an impact on your overall GPA, we will take them aside, okay? Um, but let's say that all your classes uh, are in business and you want to go into a master's of business and you've not performed well in your bachelor's degree, then unfortunately it, it will have an impact. The GMAT will help us to understand what are your quantitative, analytical and verbal skills. It's uh, an element which has a substantial part you know, in the selection committee, but it's not the only element. So it will not replace, like the, 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 the GPA will not replace the importance of a GMAT. Okay, great. Thank you. So I, uh, I, hope, I hope that helps. <laughs> oh, it does. It's very, very helpful. Thank you for uh, for taking care of those questions in that sort of lightning round. There, really appreciate it. Um, I mean, the, the you there are a couple more questions here, but I feel like we've we've addressed them in both your um, both your presentation and then in your question, your answers to the other questions that were submitted. Um, just looking through to make sure we didn't miss any, and there, there's still a couple coming in. Um, yeah, so I I feel like we have uh, we've given a pretty good some pretty good information to everyone out there. Um, unless Sonia or Tina, if you have anything to add, um, I think I this, we might want to wrap up. <laughs> um, yeah, I I mean I guess one thing I would want to ask Sonia is. Um, what advice you give to candidates that didn't achieve a strong GMAT score? Mm. Okay, so first of all, um, and this is, okay, so, so so let me go on to another topic which has totally a link to what you've asked, Tina. When you do know what are your academic objectives and you've narrowed down your choices of schools, really apply early. Okay, really apply early. And by early, I mean it can go to, I mean, in our side, we have students who have confirmed their seats up to 18 months in advance. Okay, so I hope that's a good piece of, uh, of uh, it's, it's helpful to, to the viewers. And by this, I mean, once you've narrowed down your choices of schools, uh, you will start your application process with them. Uh, let's say in 70% of the cases you will have not taken your GMAT exam and it's normal. Some schools can give you a conditional acceptance based on this missing element if they feel you have the potential to achieve the minimum score. Okay, So that gives you X amount of months to work on your GMAT. Okay, uh, obtain the and, and go over the minimum score that is required and let's say even if you've done that, you've not achieved. Try to understand why you've not achieved, let's say, a good uh, result in quants. Uh, is it because you focus too much on the verbal side? So, you know, try to set, step aside a little bit and, and understand what happened before rushing into the admissions team and giving them the bad news. Okay? Then, Admissions team and schools, if they've given you this opportunity, at the end of the day, we are human, okay? So we can understand sometimes you may be stressed, you can have like some uh, very personal issues that prevented you from performing as you should have performed normally. And this is why when you do your test exam, it's a good way for you to see in which range you, you are. Okay, and give this information to the admissions team. And the reason why I've started answering your question, Tina, by saying apply early, is because usually you have one month uh, gap that you need to allocate between two exams. Okay, so bear this in mind. Okay, 
try to take the exam not too close to the start date of the program because schools will allow you to retake your exam given that uh, it, they're comfortable with this. Um, and yeah, I think, I think that's, that's what I wanted to, to answer for this question. So my, my, my main advice is do not be scared, scared. Of course, we all have you know, uh, reasons in our life that make us fail. Uh, try to understand them, share them with the admissions team. Again, it goes back to the honesty uh, aspect that I've mentioned from the beginning. And then they can help you tell you in terms of timeline and when they suggest you retaking it so that you don't miss out on your uh, academic dreams. Great. Thank you. <laughs> so in, in with that, we actually have a new question that just came in. Um, do you look at how many times people have retaken the GMAT? Is that something that you even consider? Uh, as far as yeah. taking the GMAT multiple times and, and, and sort of how does, how does that play into your consideration of a candidate? Well, that's a very good question. Um, I'll, give you, I'll give you two examples. The first example uh, is a, a student from Peru um, who has applied for uh, an entrepreneurship program at EDEC. Okay, so uh, the average score for this program uh, is in the six, 650 range and uh, the student um, didn't score very well in the first uh, exam, okay? But we were pretty confident in his, uh, his capabilities of reaching a much higher score and his second time was much better, okay? So retaking the exam as long as we follow you and we know, you know, that it's been an improvement, why shouldn't we acknowledge that? <laughs> you know, it shows like there is a, a motivation, that there is some effort, and that there is really work being put into this application and the end goal. So it's positive. On the contrary, I've seen an example of a, of a student who has taken their exam eight times. Okay, it's very rare. I'm going into the extreme, and the student had uh, over the eight exam um, very little differences in the results, which 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 were good for to meet the minimum requirements. But how do you read that? You read that in a way that the students. This is where are the capabilities of the student, and at one point, you as a GMAT test taker, you need to see whether the, the result you've had really illustrates your potential and your performance or is it really, really a, a, a bad day? Okay. That makes sense. That's good information. So thank you. So, my advice, so, so I would say my advice is, yes, do retake it, you know, if you feel that your first attempt was not representative. Sometimes, you know, taking it too many times uh, may, not, may not portray the, the, the right message. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Tina, do you have any other uh, questions for Sonia or any other information you'd like to address? Uh, just want to give one more question. Um, this, is, this is something that candidates tend to ask a bit. So. This is coming from somebody who does have work experience, um, we have limited work experience. If um, they don't want to tell their bosses that they're doing a full-time master's or a full-time MBA, who would you recommend they get their references from? Okay, this, this is a very good question um, because we, we get this question asked many times. Um, it's fine. Absolutely fine. Mention it to the admissions team that, of course, you know, you're undergoing this application process without your boss knowing. So that would prevent us from uh, contacting them as well. Um, and in terms of references, um, you may well, usually speaking, for a, a master's degree, we like to see both a professional reference letter and an academic uh, reference letter because we're able to see really a, a good overview of your, uh, your your academic and your professional potential as well. 
Um, if your boss is not aware, you can maybe ask your uh, colleague. It doesn't have to be your manager who writes the letter for you. Sometimes I've seen some uh, students asking also their clients to write a letter about them. It enables us to see on a professional level how you are perceived as well by your, uh, your, your customers as well. So this is definitely an option uh, you can consider. Great, thank you. Great. So I think I think that's it. We don't have any other questions. Um, okay. I just want to thank Sonia for the great insights, and I hope everyone um, has taken away something to help them move forward with their application. Jamie, I don't know if you wanted to repeat that email address one more time. Yeah. Yeah, so, so two notes. So the, this, this, um, this event has been recorded, um, yeah. and it will be available on, on YouTube and, and Google+. Plus. Um, so if you want to go back and rewatch any parts of it, that's absolutely, um, absolutely up to you to do. Uh, as far as if you're interested in the, some examples of the CVs or some of the slides, uh, if you send us an email at gmatevents at mba.com, we will uh, we'll follow up with uh, with those materials for you. So that's G M A T E V E N T S at M B A dot com. Okay. Fantastic. So thanks much much thanks to Sonia and and thank, thank you to everyone for watching <laughs> and participating. Yeah, good luck with your applications. Yes. And remember, it's a fun process to go through. <laughs> Bye. All right. Thank you, Thank everybody. You.